Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I talk about recalls from time to time. And NHTSA, of course, oversees auto safety, among other things. So an automobile or a component part thereof uh, poses a safety hazard, then uh, a recall might be in order. And so quite often, it's a late model car that they discover has a problem that can be a safety issue. So for instance, if they discover a certain type of cars, shifter allows the car to shift or somehow slip out of park. That would be a safety issue. We've heard of those before. Uh, and also, like I just making stuff up here, but you know, suppose uh, engines caught on fire for some weird reason, uh, that might be a safety issue also because fire is bad. So, interesting story, and it's been widely reported. But I'm going to go with the story as reported by Jalopnik, because among other things, I used to write for Jalopnik, but they also reported on this story a while back, and I think they reported on it long before anybody else really got into it, and I think they deserve credit for having brought this story to the forefront. Goodyear finally recalled the worst tire made in history. Tire has been tied to multiple deaths and dozens of lawsuits. Eric Schilling wrote this version of it. But this story, like I said, with Jalopnik has gone back years. Now, several years ago, Jalopnik ran stories about what one lawyer called the worst tire made in history. That's the Goodyear G159. It's been linked to deaths, and it's been the center of dozens of lawsuits. The G159 was originally intended for delivery vehicles, but ended up on lots of motorhomes on which they sometimes failed and led to crashes. And that's one of the allegations, is that the tires, of course, go through all kinds of rigorous testing and so on, and they were fine on delivery vehicles. So a vehicle that drives around all day long, low speed, stop and go, neighborhood traffic, that's different than putting a tire on an RV and driving it cross-country at freeway speeds. So Goodyear has known that the tire could be bad for decades, according to court documents. And yet, it was never recalled until now. Goodyear now is recalling 173,000 of these tires, and that's almost two decades after the last one was made. 19 years after the last one came off the assembly line, they're now recalling them. NHTSA had been investigating the tires for the last five years. Now, NHTSA released a document on this, as they often do, and they opened the preliminary evaluation in 2017 to review and analyze the allegations brought forward by a private litigant that the G159 tire contained safety-related defects that had caused motorhome crashes resulting in deaths and injuries. As part of this recall investigation, NHTSA sent an information request to Goodyear in 2018. Goodyear submitted a response uh, in May of 2018. After a series of conversations and meetings between Goodyear and NHTSA, by letter of February 22, 2022, NHTSA requested that Goodyear conduct a safety recall of the tires, and Goodyear filed its response in March. They declined the request. No, thank you. Not at this time. To address concerns that some of these tires may still be in the marketplace for use, Goodyear, however, has now agreed to undertake the recall. So at first they said no, now they say yes. Any person that presents a recreational vehicle containing a subject tire will receive a replacement tire free of charge, and that would be a Goodyear G670, a different tire, presumably which is better and not defective. Goodyear will cover the cost of dismounting and disposing of the old tires and mounting and balancing the new ones. Additionally, any person presenting a subject tire on a recreational vehicle will be provided a voucher in the amount of $60 to cover the cost of having the vehicle professionally weighed. And that was one of the other things they talked about. And this is a problem in the RV industry. And by the way, for those of you who are taking notes, I do not handle RV cases anymore. I stopped a while back. I've mentioned this a couple of times. But because I talk about RVs so often, people who have problems with RVs often say, I'm going to call that guy. Well, that's fine, but I don't handle RV cases anymore. But I obviously know a lot about the industry, and I used to handle quite a few of these cases. And one of the problems that people had with RVs was there's some RVs out there that were rated at a certain weight, and they weighed a certain amount. And if you looked at all the factors that went into it, you realize that they say the RV weighs a certain amount, which is okay for the chassis because of you know that's what the chassis is rated for. 
And it turns out that they basically built it right to the edge, meaning that if you put a bunch of luggage and some people in it, you're probably putting it over. Now, you're not putting it over by a lot, but the point is they're often running these things right at the edge of acceptability. And so these tires, which they said were originally designed for delivery vehicles, put on RVs that are running at the ragged edge of their weight capacity and so on is where you have problems. So any person who owns a subject tire not installed on a recreational vehicle can exchange it for $500. Instructions to dealers will specify that any tire removed under this recall is to be rendered unsuitable for resale for installation on motor vehicles prior to returning to Goodyear for credit. All removed tires returned to Goodyear will be used by the recycler for various recycling purposes. Since the motorhome manufacturers that specify the subject tires no longer exist, Goodyear does not have or have access to any of the registration data for the subject tires. Goodyear will issue an information bulletin describing the campaign. The bulletin will be published on certain Goodyear websites and issued to tire service centers and tire dealers. Goodyear will also make contact with leading trade associations and interest groups representing recreational vehicle manufacturers, suppliers, and owners, and will request that the bulletin be made available to their membership, including through publication on those organizations' websites and or monthly publications. So, again, this is now uh, Eric Schilling speaking from Jalopnik. If you own a motorhome, I'd recommend checking out what kind of shoes your baby is wearing. I'd also be remiss not to shout out to Jalopnik alum Ryan Felton, whose work on this story has been indefatigable. <laughs> In the end, it is always a cost-benefit analysis for big companies like Goodyear. When it comes to things like this, no matter what actually happens, it only took all this time and many lives. And I don't need to explain this in the sense that many of you know this, but it's a starting point for a discussion. The tires were made up until 19 years ago. As the tires were on the road, complaints were coming in and lawsuits were being filed. Lawsuits were being settled with confidentiality agreements. And so that somebody file a lawsuit, be a bunch of noise, all of a sudden it quietly goes away. Happens again, quietly goes away. Happens again, quietly goes away. Somebody might think, gee, Steve, somebody should have said, should we have these tires recalled if there's a problem like this? On the other hand, somebody would say, but the longer we wait, the less expensive it becomes. And it's the same weighted out theory that companies like, I don't know, Ford Motor Company, did with the dual clutch transmissions because they knew those things had problems and they were on the road, but they weren't actually a safety issue. They were an inconvenience. That's the argument they made. And they knew that they were probably going to have to pay for it somewhere down the road, but the longer they wait, see, time helps them because the older the cars get, they often change hands and go to a second owner who might have different rights than the first owner. They often get damaged in car accidents and destroyed and then become non-issues. Uh, they often run themselves out of their warranty periods, at which point, again, it might not be Ford's problem anymore. And if they get, uh, after a certain age, statute of limitations. So it's in their interest, as long as they can, to run the clock. So Goodyear made the last one of these tires 19 years ago. And now they're saying, well, wait, there's 173,000 of them that we made that were sent out back then. But as you can probably guess, a lot of those tires have been replaced in the last 19 years. And worse, turns out that every single company that bought these tires from Goodyear and put them on as original equipment on these recreational vehicles, every single one of them is out of business. So how does Goodyear contact people to say, by the way, your tires are recalled? So I own a Ford motor vehicle. If my vehicle becomes subject to recall, I get a notice sent to me by Ford. And what Ford does is Ford goes and gets the information for every state of who the registered owners are of these vehicles that fit within these parameters. And they can do that. The problem, of course, with Goodyear is they're saying, look, we can't contact the manufacturers. And since we didn't sell the tires directly to the consumer, there's no way for us to actually get in touch with them. So we're going to do the recall and we're just going to put up notices on the internet and at tire stores and things of that nature and hope the word gets out there. 
And the word might get out there. But I assure you right now, someplace in America, there's somebody who's got one of these motorhomes parked in their driveway. It's got these tires on it. And they're never going to find out about the recall. They aren't. They aren't. And so, interestingly, if they had issued this recall earlier, some of these companies might still be in business. If they were still in business, you might be able to contact them and say, hey, look, how do we get a hold of your, your buyers? Now, I know what you're going to say, Steve, they could do the same thing that Ford does. Well, it gets a little trickier, though, because these tires weren't put on every single vehicle made by these manufacturers. They're put on some of them. Which ones? And trying to figure that out might make that an impossible task. So this is unfortunate because this is an example where having taken so long to respond, it benefits them greatly. And the exchange for that is people got hurt. People got killed. So we don't know exact numbers. I've seen some articles that speculate about it and some that even give estimates of the numbers that uh, NHTSA thinks are accurate with respect to deaths and injuries. And apparently these tires uh, being used underneath heavy RVs at high speeds will occasionally have the tread come off. And, you know, if it's one of the tires that's doubled up in the back, uh, uh, you know, with dual axles, it might not cause that much trouble. Uh, Of course, if it's one of your front wheels and you're going around a corner, it might cause a lot of trouble. So that's the situation. Like I said, we got to give a big shout out to the guys at Jalopnik in particular. Ryan Felton, because I remember reading the series. He wrote an extensive article where he laid out everything he dug up. And it was the kind of reporting that you'd expect to see at a major, major like newspaper or something. And I remember looking at that going, wow, Jalopnik actually has one here where they got the story and fleshed it out better than anybody else. And, um, you know, that's the type of stuff Jalopnik does. So I love I loved Jalopnik. Uh, I know a lot of guys who used to work there. <laughs> I don't know as many people who are there right now, but I still know a couple. But this article here about Eric Schilling, Goodyear finally recalled the worst tire made in history. Edward, Michael, Ed, Don, and Josh all sent it. Thanks a lot. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Happiness fuels success, not the other way around.